Hi, everybody. I'm Kara. Nice to see you. We made it back safely and in one piece. Most of us. <laughs> I was on the Tool Timer crew, and I had Robin, Jaden, Steven, and Mariah with me on my crew. And we had a blast building a deck. It was really, really cool. Um, so one, the second day in, we went for like this walk down around the park to go talk to people. And there was like a little park, and it was trash. There was litter everywhere. So we decided to go back, and we got like trash bags and stuff, and we like cleaned up this park as much as we could. And the next day, we went back again. And there was these couple like little girls playing in a pool across the street both days. And we tried to talk to them, but they seemed kind of scared of us. So they kind of like stayed away from us. And kind of makes sense. I mean, there was five of us walking towards them. So yeah, not smart. So we cleaned up the park. And we were about to leave. And it was lunch. They came and told us that it was lunch. And this guy came out of his house, and he just started talking to us and asking us what we did and what we were working for and a bunch of stuff. And so we just talked to him. And so that was number one of our gospel sharing. And there were some people. There was, like, this little store across the street, and we went over there a few times and went inside the store, and we talked to the lady behind the counter, and we prayed for her. And then there was this guy another time we went in, and we just talked to him and asked him if he had prayer requests, and he said he had done it that morning, so he had nothing for us. And so we, we shared the gospel a total of like five or six times over the whole week, and that was just the work week of our four days being up there. So that was pretty impressive, and I thought that it was really good. I think we all really needed it, and I think that it made us closer as a youth group in general. I love all you guys. And thank you for all the support that you guys gave us through prayer or telling us before we left. I think that helped a lot. Hi, I'm Steven. What's up? <laughs> um, once again, um, I was on the tool timers with Kara, Jaden, Mariah, and Robin. And... Uh, one thing I want to point out is me and Jaden and others on the crew, but me and Jaden dug a lot of holes. We dug like 17, 18 holes that were about a foot in diameter and a foot and a half to 20 inches down, roughly. So um, with me and Jaden digging all these holes, being he lives in Cheyenne, it was nice because I got to get him to hang out with him and to know him a little better, which I, I'm really thankful for. It was awesome hanging out with you. Um, <laughs> But uh, it was overall a really great experience. Um, throughout the week, we got to share the gospel a lot. Personally, I didn't, but I was on the work site the entirety of the time, most of the time. Um, we built the deck, as Kara said, but it, it was crazy to look at because we had to take down this old, rugged, beaten down deck. We had to tear it apart and then put a new one in, and then it was it was crazy to see because it was the, the transformation from this old beat down thing that was, you know, the wood was bending in to this new supported beautiful deck and we never got to stain it, but um, it looked really good and it kind of showed that these people don't have much. These people don't have what they need or deserve. These people live down in, you know, the road we were working on, the house we were working on, you know, the paint was chipping away the road to it wasn't even paved, it was a dirt road. And you know, this neighborhood of motorhomes, dirt road, they were all beaten down and it was just crazy to look at. So we, I honestly began to not take things for granted. I'm trying to work on not setting myself, I need this, this and this, but just to appreciate what I have in general. And I've been praying about it and I hope that God begins to stick it through me and um, overall keep doing on these mission trips so thank you hi guys hi guys uh i'm Jaden, and am i too loud how's this is this good okay um 
I went on the missions trip, and it was a really good experience. This would be my fourth one, so I've been on every one this church has done. And every time is a blessing. <laughs> and uh, um, what, there was a really good experience I had. We had a crew leader named Eric, and he was telling a story during one of our devotions. And it was that he was talking to this pastor, and the pastor and his wife were driving down the road. And the pastor would wave at every person every car that went by, every person that walked by. And the pastor's wife asked him why he did that. And the pastor was talking about how a while back he was doing his normal thing, waving at people, and he waved at a guy and didn't think much of it until about a month later the guy came into the church and he told the pastor thank you because he felt invisible, and so he was on his way to end his life. And that one wave just saved him. So really really shows that the little things do matter and overall it was a really good week thank you all for praying for us and it was nice to get to know you as well Stephen so there you go thank you I'm only 411 don't judge me anyway um hi I'm Mariah uh at I was with them. Yeah, lucky me. Anyway, <laughs> this is my um, first missions trip, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm very, very thankful that I got to go because it was honestly a true gift that I got to come on this with these amazing people. Thank you, Robin and Ryan, for letting us go and taking us. Um, <clears throat> something that truly amazing happened, at least it was a big impact on my life, was um, when we were there on Sunday, I fully accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. <laughs> so I've been trying to celebrate that because um, it's just been huge. And it helped me throughout the week, and it helped me realize that these people, a lot of them, you know, they don't even know who Jesus Christ is, and they don't even know what to do, because they don't have anyone to go to, they don't have anyone to talk to, and <clears throat> anyway, and while we were there, we helped so many people, and we got to bring faith into their lives, and show them that there's so much good out in the world, and that if it's not right in front of them, then they should go out, and they should get it and that I think we brought a little hope to their lives, and we showed them that um, by taking in Christ, um, there's people out there that can help them and stuff. So what I think is cool is that while, we, while I was on this group, we finished a seven-day project in four days, and we tore down you know, just the whole entire porch and you know, built it up again. And the guy who was there, he helped us through the whole entire thing, which was, I, I think it was actually pretty cool. And um, there was a st this gas station across, and we went over there, and we talked to a few people over there. And then while we were heading back over here, <clears throat> there was, um, we went to a gas station in Montrose, and there was this guy, he was sitting outside, and he went up to Stephen and asked him if he had any water or food at by any chance. <clears throat> And um, then Miss Robin brought him out some uh, food, and so did Jessica. And we asked him, do you know who Jesus Christ is? And his exact words were, yeah, he's my homeboy. So I thought that was really awesome. And I asked him um, why, like, um, Robin asked him what was going on, and she explained to us that he's from Arizona, and um, he just wants to go back home, so we were praying over him, and um, I think we helped him a little bit at least, and just made him realize that there's people out there that, that can help him, and so many other people that we helped, and I, again, am very thankful that we got to help these people, because it showed not only an improvement in their life, but my life, because I got to see how much I actually have and how little they have and how much I can help and how much of an impact I can help that one person can help so many other people. Okay, well, I'm 
Robin. Most of you know that, but okay. Um, so this was my first experience being on this side of, uh, you know, I was a participant all those years ago, and that was amazing. And now I'm an adult. <laughs> and, um, so I was a crew encourager, and it was so neat to be able to get to work with some of the kids on from our youth group because to see them interact with others and to see them step out of their comfort zone from that normal Wednesday night youth time that I get to spend time with them and seeing them out there in the world, sharing the gospel with others and working hard and not complaining, I, it just blessed my heart. And I just want to tell you guys, you guys have an amazing, amazing group of kids. And um, they are all so very, very special to me. Um, I just want to expound a little bit on some of their stories. Um, our, so they touched on one of the evening's uh, messages was about um, investing in people. And um, I just, you know, what Jaden's story is of, you know, just a simple wave. Um, the, the gentleman that we talked to at the gas station, I, I asked him his name, introduced him, uh, myself to him, and when I went into the store to get him some food, I came back and a whole bunch of these kids were just loving on him and listening to him and talking to him. And when I came out with the food, by the way, his name was Jeffrey, I said, Jeffrey, um, here, I, you said you were hungry, so I would like you to have this. And he um, was very taken back for a second. And, he, and I thought, well, maybe he doesn't like the food that I got him <laughs> because I just went in and bought some beef jerky and stuff because he had said that he was Native American and he likes meat. So I thought, well, let's see, jerky, okay. So I grabbed some jerky, and he was kind of taken back for a second. And I handed it to him, and I thought, well, maybe it's because he doesn't want to accept charity. Because, you know, there's, there's definitely a pride thing of accepting a gift from somebody else when you're in that position. And um, so I was kind of expecting to him to say, oh, no, 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 you know. But, I, but what came out of his mouth was he looked me right in the eye and said, thank you for remembering my name. Um, he felt like he was invisible, like he was nothing, and he was not worthy of receiving anything from anybody. So I would like, the message that I touched my heart this week was invest in people. Find out people's names and, and, and really get to know the people that are around you because you never know the person that you walk past just to go into the gas station. They have a whole story and they're hurting and they just want someone to look at them, shake their hand, and find out what their name is. So that's my challenge to all of you guys too is um, to look around and see who is around you that needs someone to pray with or someone just to know that they know my name and they care. So, thank you. There's one, per well, there's several people that couldn't be with us today. Um, my brother Joel that went on the trip and uh, Don Mortensen, um, Jessica and Olivia's dad. So I'm going to be reading a letter that uh, Don had written. He had to work today. Um, so I'm just going to read that from him because he wanted to share um, what God had done for him on this trip. So it says, first of all, sorry I can't be here this morning with all of you. I want to thank you all for your prayers and your echograms. This was a fun and exciting trip. All your children are great young ladies and gentlemen. I am proud of our youth group. They are very responsible and respectful of others. It shows how they have been well raised. I have a story. On my work site, we had a very small house. Now, Don, Don was on the same crew as my brother Joel and wasn't with any of the rest of the group. On my site, we had a very small house, and it took all week because we kept on getting the wrong materials brought to us. We did finish on Thursday, though. My owner's name was Paula Chi. We had to redo the stucco on this house, put on a new roof and a new deck for her. Now one of the supervisors wanted to give her a new doorknob. She had a padlock for when she left home, she would lock it all the way. When she was home, she would be inside and she would prop something against the door to shut it. When she came home that afternoon, she saw this door handle. She went in and out, shutting the door, locking the new handle and unlocking it going in and out and playing with the door handle, kind of like a kid. 
would try a new toy. This was so touching to me. After we finished her house on Thursday, we all got big hugs. Needless to say, my heart is now full. And yes, I'm going again next year. So look out, world. I have Jesus in me again, and I have love for God's word. I also want to say I'm proud of Mariah for accepting Jesus. All of the youth make me feel like, like there is hope. Olivia, Jessica, Stephen, Matthew, Hunter, Hannah, Elijah, Jaden, Michaela, Camden, Malia, Mariah, Carl, Alexis, Austin, Ryan, Robin, and Sherry, thank you for letting me come along and for letting me be a part of your fun and family. I love you all. Have a wonderful day and see you on Wednesday night. Don. And he had a couple verses he wanted me to share. Proverbs 17, 17. It says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. And Acts, Acts 20, 25. And indeed, now I know that now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Please stand. Hello, my name's Austin, and uh, I'm pretty new here. I've just been going to this youth group for a couple weeks, and it was a really good mission, really good mission trip. It was my very first world changers and mission trip, but. I was on uh, shortcuts with Elijah and a couple other people from different states, and they were, they were a blessing. They, they, we got along, and uh, I made some friends, and it was hard work and everything, but we did it for the glory of God. And We had to build a porch, and we had to dig holes and concrete and everything, and I have to say, the concrete was miserable, to be honest. It was really, really hard. <laughs> you had to mix, dig, and dig the holes and pour everything, but... God guided us through it and everything. He gave me the patience with everyone because sometimes I really wanted to hurt someone. <laughs> but he just gave me the patience to fight through it and have a good time and everything. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Elijah. I was with the shortcut with Austin. And I'm going to talk about our homeowner. Our homeowner um, was a man who didn't want to live in his house because his wife couldn't get in there with him because she was in a wheelchair. And he didn't have a wheelchair ramp so that she could get in. So we were building a porch with a wheelchair ramp for her. And, well, just recently his house had been stolen from. Um, they took everything. They took his stove. They took his washer and dryer, and so he was kind of down on his luck, but he was so happy when we showed up and started building. He was just very thankful that we were actually doing it for him and helping him, because he thought he was going to have to do this all on his own, and it was going to take years, and yeah. And then we got some help from the square feet, Jessica's group. Um, they went in and started painting and doing all the paint on the outside and the inside and um, on the last day we gave them a little extra piece of wood that had everyone's name on it from on the square feet and the shortcuts and he was just so happy um, the sad thing was is we didn't get to see his wife at all but um, he was very happy and he had this dog he <laughs> loved to jump on people just you, it walks up to you and just goes. <laughs> but he was very happy, and I was just, I was so happy that we could actually get out there and do this, um, for somebody else, and you know, not for, you know, pay or for what we want, but for somebody else who needed it, who didn't have the luxuries that we did. The, our property didn't have running water or electricity, so. We, we had to bring in a generator and bring water barrels in, but um, even though we had to, you know, use, we didn't have the modern things, we 
I think we work very hard, and I just love doing it. Hey, guys. <laughs> As you know, last year I was all on my crew all alone, but this year I had three other people. Olivia, Malia, and Matthew. We helped this lady named Emma fix her house up and repaint it. And she was falling away from God. And at the end of our talks, she said that she was back with him because of us. And it was pretty amazing because of the fact that we helped her recover from everything that she was going through. And and we just helped her. Bye. <laughs> hey, I'm Matthew, and this is my first time on the missions trip, but I had a lot of fun. And so we got up there, and we went to see the house. And uh, our homeowner, as she said, was falling away from God. But uh, we helped her come back to God. And I was the crew reporter, which meant basically I was the one who would like go talking to people and like asking if I could pray with them and like sharing the gospel and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, would, I would go on prayer walks, which meant like we would go house to house and just pray for that house by like looking at the details and stuff. And like sometimes people were curious that some people were just praying out that side of their house so they'd come out and like, it, it was amazing that people would just tell you about their life and like be willing to let you pray for them. And um, it was a really good experience for me and I had a lot of fun. Hello, my name is Malia, and I was on the crew Scrape, Splatter, and Roll, and we were working with Miss Emma, and we had to replace windows, take down her siding, put it back on, and paint her entire house. So I don't want to be painting for a while longer, <laughs> um, but it was amazing because she was just a really kind person, and she was always getting us water and she got us popsicles at the end and she was giving us postcards but she was just a really loving person and we got to meet her neighbor who was very kind and she was really willing to let us pray for her and she um so her neighbor has been li living in that house for a very long time and she doesn't really like it anymore because she wants to visit her family so be praying for her because she really misses her family and never gets to see them. And yeah, we had a really fun time replacing windows, but we almost didn't get our project done because there is this one really big sec section that was missed in the front that we found on the last day. But luckily we got that done and we were able to finish the project. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I am Olivia. I was on the crew with Matthew, Malia, and Alexis. Uh, this is my second year at World Changers, and one thing that like popped out at me was like, it was like really early on, like I don't know when Monday, I guess Sunday. It was the prayer, the concert of prayer, and it was different than um, most concerts of prayer. This one. Um, you don't just like take a partner and just pray with them. This one, every everyone is silent. The whole room is dark, and there's just like different sections you can go to, and you write something on that section, like a prayer or something you're thankful for, and that just stood out to me because like it's something different and something new that we don't really do on World Changers, and like I'm glad I got to like talk to God throughout the whole entire thing because that was just what it was mainly about. Um, and also another thing that stood out to me was our homeowner. She was like so 
caring and nice and like it was second to last day I think and uh, we had most of the house painted and all the windows were put in and I just like took her around showing her the outside of the house and I'm just like how do you like the house and she started crying and start, she told me that she was thankful that we could come and work on her house because it never looked better than it than how we did it and she was she said that she was happy that we came and that like we took our own time just to come here and work on her house and that we can like share the gospel for everyone and we helped her a lot and that just like made me smile made my day hello my name is camden and i was a part of the crew toenails i also had Anna and Hunter with me, and it was truly just an amazing experience. And my role on the crew was a crew reporter. I had to mark down all the people we spread the gospel to, all the people that asked questions, and I was the, me and the devotion leader of our crew, we were the ones that were talking to the homeowners a lot. And one day, it was a really good day, we had, we spread the gospel to at least 20 people, and it was truly an amazing experience because I heard about that I'm like man that is just awesome and we were working on Miss Ramona's house and it was a pretty nice house the walls they were all chalky with paint so we had to wipe down the whole house and we had to paint over it a whole new coat and it was truly amazing because I would like to say that we got into a blessing war because we were here we blessed them we painted their house we fixed their gutter we put a gutter up for them we painted the trim all that stuff and they were over there they gave us food they gave us water they baked they made lunch for us they got cantaloupe juice watermelon juice and I was actually talking to one of the homeowners and she said man you guys are amazing because I would love to go to my church and take all those kids out to where you guys are doing and doing this in your free time and you guys want to be here and it was truly amazing and now Miss Ramona, she was an older lady. She had diabetes in her both of her wrists, and she also has very low blood circulation to her legs. And she was just sitting there, she was smiling, and she was on oxygen, and we were t I was talking with her, and she's like, you guys, I just want to thank you so much because you guys have truly inspired us for what you have been doing here. Thank you. I'm Hunter, and one of the best things that I thought about this week was just the family that we got to work for and how they were just so thankful. And I also liked just working on the house and getting to learn how to do new things that I had never done before. So I thought it was amazing and how God was working through us and how it affected uh, like the people at the park that we went to and also the family we worked for. So. Hello, I am Hannah, and I was on the toenails with Camden and Hunter. And you've already heard about the family that we were with. And on Sunday, after we had our church service, we went to just go and check out the house what all it was that we needed to do, how long we estimated it would take. And when we got there, it was like her entire family was there. She was 86? 87? Yeah. 86 or 87 years? Years young. That was the word she used. Years young. And she had nine children, 16 grandchildren, and 18 great-grandchildren. And it seemed like all those people were at the house when we went to look at it on Sunday. And, like, we walked in, and I'm just like, oh, no, we're interrupting something. We're, like, not supposed to be here. And it was, like, the exact opposite. They just, they came up to us. They welcomed us. They offered us food. They offered us drink. They're just like, come, sit, eat, talk. And it was just amazing because I'm just like, well, I don't really want to intrude on family time. And they were just like, no, come. You're welcome here. And then when we finished, one of her daughters, Lori, 
she was amazing, and she wasn't there every day, but she was telling us that any time we were in Galveston, Mexico, any time at all, whether it was 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, to just go back and visit them and see them again because she knew that they would never forget the blessing that we had given them. And the blessing that they gave us was just as great because it just, it took going out there to realize how little these people have and how happy they are with what they have. And it's just, it's amazing. It's really, truly amazing. Thank you. Um, so, hi. Uh, I loads of fun while we were up there. Um, I was on a crew and we were square feet and everyone else who was with me was me, myself, and I, so that was great. <laughs> but that also meant that I got, was kind of like forced to meet a bunch of new people from my crew. And the homeowners we were helping out were um, generally well off. They weren't as bad as some of the other people you're gonna see, you, you do see in the Navajo Nation. They had running water, they had electricity, and um, the homeowner, homeowner we helped, his name is Rinaldon, and what I find great is he was the youth pastor to the church we were staying at. And he didn't stay most of the time, he wasn't there. He went off to help another crew, your crew, Ryan's crew, and he got up on that roof and he worked his butt off just, he didn't even want to go back to his house to see how things were going. He wanted to stay there and help the people that he was with. So most of the time we were there with his two kids, Kylie and Zach. And we were building a real wheelchair ramp for them, um, for Zach because he has, I think it's, if I remember right, several palsy in his legs, so he's unable to walk. And I just, I find it amazing because he's not able to do most things that everyone in this room can do, but he, still has the same energy and excitement for everything, if not more. So um, we were allowed to go inside and play Xbox with him. <laughs> if, we, if he asked us, then we would go inside or we could stay outside helping. He would come out and he helped me stay in the porch a bit. And on our final day there, we, we spent two days there before we finished. And um, I went in to say goodbye to him and he asked, are you coming back tomorrow? And I had to tell him, we're not, but if you come to the church, we'll be able to see you. And he's like, oh. And then he's like, can I have a hug? <laughs> so he gave us all hugs and we left. And he's just, he's a great spirit. He inspires me so much to do more and be happy with what you have in life. <laughs> and his sister, she was, really shy. She didn't like to say much or really do much. So she just, she'd come out, she'd watch us for a bit, help us hand us some things if needed, go back inside. And we thought, okay, we've built this, repaired this ramp. We poured some concrete. We have a chunk left that wasn't filled in. Let's go buy her a plant. So we took her along with, and down to the holiday nursery and we bought her this beautiful plant that will live not much water and lots of sun. <laughs> and she didn't seem very excited about it, but we knew she liked it. And we get back, and the next morning, our crew leader is telling us how Rinaldin told her that she was so excited for the plant. Like, when their mom got home, she was like, Mom, Mom, did you see my plant? Did you see my plant? They bought me a plant. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. And I think one of the fun moments we had was when a, one of our summer staffers uh, tried to teach us her call from South Carolina. And it goes, Yee! Yee! My, my dog! dog. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad I got to go for my second year and hang out with all these wonderful people, so.
Hi, I'm Sherry, and I was one of the adults. <laughs> I guess. And um, this was my first World Changers mission. Um, it was the first time I'd been on a roof in about 35 years, <laughs> so that was really fun. I was on Ryan's crew. We had an opportunity to work on the home of a man whose entire extended family lived in the area around him. He was a believer, and he almost served as a beacon of hope to these people. The tragedy that they have endured um, and the hardships that they endure um, are heartbreaking. And um, for us to be able to go, give him a new roof, um, pour a cement for a sidewalk so that he could wheel his wheelchair in from the room where he sleeps to the part of the house where the bathroom is, um, uh, to restucco his house and paint it. Um, it provided him with a visual reference for the hope that he has in Christ. And to see the difference between um, people who have that hope and those who don't. And in spite of these meager circumstances and in spite of the hardships and the um, environments that the kids have described to you, the difference is Christ. And to see that hope and know that um, there's a joy there and there's a peace there and there's a purpose there in spite of it all was really inspirational. And hanging out with these kids was crazy. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun. <laughs> and they are wonderful kids. And it was... Um, it was an opportunity for us all to circle back and focus in on our missions as Christians that we are, <laughs> that what are we about as followers of Christ? And World Changers' mission is to serve others and share the gospel, and we all got to do that in a very real, very tangible way this week that brings back into focus that that's what Christians are about, serving others and sharing the gospel. Because it's only through the hope of Jesus Christ that we have the joy and the peace and the salvation that we all need. So it was an amazing trip. So I'm McKaylee. I was on the crew, Plum Bobs with Ryan and Sherry. I just want to say thank you to you adults for taking a week from work and from your busy lives to take us on this, these trips. This is my fourth World Changers. It's definitely had the biggest impact on me, both physically and spiritually. Um, I learned that roofing is not easy whatsoever. <laughs> Never. Um, within about two hours of getting on, or not even two hours, within an hour of getting on the roof, Ryan said, don't step here. Me being me. I zoned out, it was 7 a.m., I didn't pay attention. I stepped right where he told me not to, and from my hip down on my left leg went through the roof, and I gave the homeowners a skylight as we joked all week. So I learned when Ryan says something, you should probably listen to him. Um, but I was just very thankful to work on Harrison's house, and I got to sit there and talk to him and his wife and learn about how the last couple of years have went for them, and when we first met them, or at least met Harrison, they were on their way to a funeral in Arizona for his wife's niece who passed away. And you could, just sitting there talking to them and his wife telling me about everything that's happened to them and their family in the last couple of years, I could see the heartbreak and I could see how much us doing what we were doing meant so much to them. And it meant a lot to me too. My, I love going on World Changers. I love being able to help people and just help show them who God is because he is amazing. And it also makes me thankful and grateful for everything my parents have done to provide for me and give me the love they've given me and given me the safe environment that I have. Um, because most of the families don't have that down there. I mean, Harrison has his son, his and his daughter and their kids and their grandkids all living with him in one house that's not very big. I mean, not what we're certainly used to. And so it's just very encouraging and 
helped remind me of how grateful I am. I want to say thank you to Ryan and Robin for letting us be a part of this every year, even though we moved to Cheyenne. It is my favorite part of the summer, getting to go and be with you, with the youth and getting to know them. I also want to thank my grandpa, Pop. Every day when I got home from the work site, I had a message and a prayer from him that he prayed to God for me. And it was just amazing to get that every day and to go back from the work site and just to know that he prayed for me and that I'm in your guys' prayers as a church. So thank you. I just want to start off by saying thank you for Church Body, for everything that you've done, um, all the uh, prayer support, the funding, the work that you allow these kids to do. Um, we really appreciate it and couldn't do it without you guys. Um, so you guys are a part of what God did last week um, in Gallup, New Mexico. Um, just, just for a little brief description for those of you that aren't familiar with World Changers, because um, we weren't alone. There was 65 participants at Gallup, New Mexico from all across the country, Georgia, Utah, Wyoming, New Mexico, Kansas. Um, well, we were, um, so these kids met a lot of kids from all around the country that had the same love for Christ as they did, made some good friends, um, and impacted a lot of people. Um, World Changers is a great organization. Um, there's few places where we can go for a week and these kids can learn about God's word, how powerful God's word is and how it impacts their lives, the power of prayer. Sometimes we get caught up in our daily lives and don't realize the impact. When you spend a week and your sole focus is on Jesus Christ, his word, and prayer, you can start seeing the power of prayer. Sometimes we say, well, where's the power in prayer? Where do we, I don't see God working. I don't see God moving. It takes commitment and time to see God working through prayer and through God's word. We don't ever spend time doing it. We never see God's power in it. And so these kids this week saw God's power through prayer. Our, our theme this week was limitless. And we talked about God's limitless power, God's limitless love. There's also a few places where kids go and everything that's done is not about us. Everything's done for somebody else. And it's just amazing to me, and I'm so blessed that you guys let me spend a week with your kids and that these kids spent a week of their time, and actually, when you look back at it, more like two or three weeks of their time working to earn money, spending money, taking time out of their summer to go wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, work hard all day long, Go to bed at 11 o'clock, or some of you midnight, or who knows when. <laughs> and have, have nothing in return for them. But we've learned through these mission trips and through this week that when you, when you give of yourself, when you give up everything for someone else, the person who usually gets the most out of it is ourselves. And uh, my, my greatest joy this week was watching God work in our group and in our kids. Working in Mariah, um, letting her come to know Christ, becoming a child of God. Um, and I saw God touch each and every one of these people sitting behind me um, in a great way. But... I want to challenge you guys, still pray for this group behind us. This is tomorrow's church right here, and I'm so proud of them. And they're growing up to be godly men and women, but they still need our love and prayer and support as they go through a hard um, society that we live in. 
I want to share with you guys um, a passage that we talked about um, this past week, and it's so hard to shorten down what you guys, what we've learned in a week's time. I'd like to share with you a passage that we studied this week, um, Philippians 3, 14 through 21. It says, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that we would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with all might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all fullness of God now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So this week we talked about, through this passage, we talked about God's limitless invitation, that God is always seeking others to come to know him, that God is always inviting those around us to come to know him, and he works through us to go out and invite people to himself. We talked about God's limitless power, which I talked about before. We talked about God's limitless love, God's limitless knowledge, and God's limitless glory. And we talked about the four eyes. What are the four eyes? Invite. Identify. Invest. 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 Excellent. Invite. Increase. <laughs> okay. We talked about needing to identify those around us. How many times do we walk by somebody and don't have a clue about who they are? Don't have a clue if they know about Christ, if they don't know about Christ, if they're hurting, if they're not hurting. We just live our lives the way we live them and we just care about ourselves and what we've got and what we want. Um, that we need to identify those around us. Because if we're not looking for somebody to talk to, to minister to, to touch, to impact, we never will. The second one, which Robin talked a little bit about, which I think is one of the most important ones, is invest. We're not going to get the blessings from God unless we invest in other people. We're supposed to go out and make disciples, not make Christians, disciples. Disciples more than just getting people saved. It's helping people to, to walk with God, to invest. Now, we just had a week to invest in other people this week. Um, but now that we're home, we're back, my prayer is that you guys would invest in those around you. Um, and my challenge to you guys is invest in those around you. Give of your time, give of your money, give of yourself to change someone's life around you. We were involved a little bit in ShareFest earlier this year. Um, we plan to be more next year. That's along those same lines of investing in one another. The next one is invite. Invite people to come to Christ. Once we invest our lives in them, we know where they're at. Most of the time, people don't respond to walking up to someone. Do you know Jesus? They're like, whoa, no. If people won't care what we know until they know that we care, um, that's what World Changes is all about. Building someone a deck, fixing someone's roof. In 20 years, 30 years, that's all going to be done again. But if they know that we care about them, Jesus says, if we've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. So we've done this for the sake of Christ, to reach and to touch people's lives for Christ. And the last one is increase. When we've identified people and invested them and invited them into relationship with Christ, God's kingdom will be increased. And that's what we want. Our world's a world full of people that are going to hell, um, that are lost, so many people you rub shoulders with, rub elbows with, talk to, um, 
and never say something or do something. Um, so I challenge you guys to do these things um, that we may increase the kingdom of God, that we may glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so I want to thank you guys for another wonderful year on mission trip. How many of you guys, this is your first year on the mission trip? So a lot of these kids are impacted again. Their second, third, fourth time. But a lot of times they're, this, they're their first time. And uh, God has such, made such an impact this week. So I want to thank you. And I just want to give all the glory to Jesus Christ because uh, really it's all through him and his word and prayer that has impacted these kids and myself and all the leaders uh, this week. All right, can I call my ushers to come forward? We'll take the morning offering.